Welcome to highlights of the first Ray Peacock podcast live recorded at the Arts Theatre London on the 22nd of April 2008. Hello, welcome to the Ray Peacock podcast. So the Arts Theatre in London, London's fashionable West End, although apparently they don't like to be called the West End, they like to be called Off West End, but we've decided to call it Within Wanking Distance of the West End, <laughs> which some people consider to be bad taste. I'm, I'm Ray Peacock. Hello, everybody. Hello. That's nice. Um, I'm going to be joined um, in a moment by uh, my friend, well, it could be either of them. There are two of them, so we will bring one of them out now. And by the way, and don't, be, don't alienate them in any way, shape or form. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, would you please welcome little Big Fat Ed Gamble to the <laughs> Unfortunate, isn't it? Ed? Yeah. The audience have already turned on you. <laughs> I just said your name and they all shout, they started shouting you fat bastard. Oh, it's just embarrassing. Very clever. And isn't I it? wish that this was a fucking video podcast or a vodcast <laughs> because I've never seen a funnier fat man <laughs> dancing in my entire life. How are you, Ed? You okay? Uh, I'm very well. Fat, apparently. You are quite fat. I love that people can see it now as well. See what? How short and fat you are and how. <laughs> Um, so, Ed, are you alright? Yes, I'm very well. You've just been you, in the dressing yeah. room, haven't you? I have been, yeah, dressing room cupboard. A little dressing room yeah. cupboard there? Yeah. Not enough room for one person, let alone three of us. We've all in there for a bit. Yeah, I think Raj is sort of flat against the wall at the moment. Like, <laughs> I liked it because you can't see here, but behind here is a little, like, the stairs come down, so there's an under the stairs? Yeah. Raj is living under the stairs. <laughs> a, a little bit like Harry Potter. Yeah, Bollywood Harry Potter. A little Bollywood Harry Potter, yeah. <laughs> Bless him. <laughs> and he had his one go. Um, <laughs> So, uh, the thing is, we're not very good on our own. No, we're not. If it's just me and you, that'd be oh, shit. Because we do, we are dead funny. Yeah, no one gets it, though. No one gets it, you just don't get it. We <laughs> <laughs> that thing that we do. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. that thing what we always do. No one gets it. Did you get it? <laughs> um, so, perhaps, yeah. we should, um, bring a little, have you done his chair? Oh. Okay. Get his chair so he falls off it when he's in the Balance it nicely, the bird, brilliant. Right, don't say nothing. <laughs> Because there's someone videoing this at the moment and we can get £250 off this. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to bring on to the stage, ladies and gentlemen, little Raji James, who used to be on EastEnders, but ruined it! <laughs> Give it to me, Raji! dressing Raji up as somebody, but he doesn't know who it is. So we dress him up all nice and you are wearing two belts across your busters. Yeah. Um, we didn't do this, by the way. This is Raji's own t-shirt. No word of a fucking lie. He came down in his house and went, I might wear this. It says, as seen on TV on the front of your shirt. Yeah. Is it ironic? How so? <laughs> And you're also, you're also wearing a lovely little um, purple thong thing, yeah. which again was in your house. This is true, but I, I don't know whose it is. That is even worse. <laughs> because also, I think that is a child size. <laughs> so who do you think you are, Roger? You can have two guesses. Well, it's obvious who I am. I'm Jodie Marsh, isn't it? <clears throat> you're not Jodie Marsh. Oh, come on. Of course I'm Jodie Marsh. I've got the belts and... Why are you sounding scripted? <laughs> I'm not <sorry. laughs> This is the most bizarre thing in the entire world. I, I must be Jodie Marsh. Yes, I am not Jodie Marsh. Am I Jodie Marsh? Um, go on, who do you think you are? I don't know. Well, if not Jodie Marsh. Um, the one from. Uh, the one from are you going to say that bloke off EastEnders? No. <laughs> no. The one from what is he? He was shit in it. What is his name? I'm going to take this one now. Um, I'll tell you who you are. Tomb Raider. <laughs> That's good, isn't it? Why am I wearing a thong? She wore shorts. It doesn't matter who it was, Roger. We just want to get in a thong. 
<laughs> so, we, oh, by the way, look at this, what we've got as well. You'll see in front of Raji, he's got a name sign that says Raji on it. Now, that looks dead cheap and looks shit, but we haven't done that. Nope. That is Raji's name plaque sign thing from Blankety Blank. <laughs> <laughs> Raji was on Blankety Blank with Lily Savage, <laughs> probably ruined it. I ended up getting paid uh, four times for that and only doing two episodes. <laughs> what a lovely story, actually. <laughs> <laughs> and we've got this as well. This is another thing, but it is, even though it's impressive, it is also really sad, right? This is Raji James' plaque. It says Raji James on it, and it says London Borough of Walford, E20. Right? Now, isn't that beautiful? That was his dressing room door sign when he was on EastEnders, wasn't it, Raji? Yeah. Um, and I find it so sad because when I look at that, I think, somebody had to unscrew that. <laughs> <laughs> that. For me, that is just something that has been taken away. No, they gave it to me. It was nice. That was nice of them. Did anything bad happen at EastEnders? <laughs> oh, no. Something bad just happened. I've just knocked the bottle of water over. Probably not enough to stop a show for them, is it, Rob? <laughs> <laughs> about the noise of it. Yeah, well, the more you're banging about, the more noise yeah. there is. Um, <laughs> right. What happened? Was it a bad, a bad thing that happened at EastEnders? No, no, no it's good. Nothing bad happened there at all. Not that I can remember. Oh, what's this I've got here? <laughs> <laughs> well, look, it's the Sunday people from this Sunday just gone. Oh, look at this, page nine. Dirty Den's Naked Fury. What's this, Raji? <laughs> what is it? Look, the, the Dirty Den's Naked Fury, Raji. By like Tom Latcham. Right. Shamed Leslie Grantham had a furious bust up with an EastEnders co star after the people revealed he was an internet pervert. I don't know who that is, I don't know who he had a bust up with. I'm sure that I'm sure he got on with loads of people. Oh, act, wait, actor, Raji James, so you can sue for that. <laughs> <laughs> He played Ash Ferreira, bumped into the Dirty Den star as our story caused uproar on set. Raji said yesterday, People were walking around on eggshells. The first words out of my mouth were, Morning Leslie, you fucked up, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's got asterisks in it though. Grantham was fuming and never, in bold, spoke to Raji for the 12 months before they both quit into the... Fucking both quit! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can get fucking thousands out of this, Raji! Well, also, it's, lies. It's, it's not entirely accurate anyway, because the, the thing, it, it, it sort of insinuates that um, he didn't talk to me because of what I said. Why didn't he talk to you then? No, it wasn't, it's a bit controversial. he wasn't talking to me much before that. I mean, <laughs> the, 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 the only thing he ever said to me was when, when I first met him and I introduced myself and I was like, oh, hi, Leslie, I'm, I'm Raji, I'm playing, you know, Ash Ferreira. And he just looked at me and went, yeah, of course you are. And then bumped <laughs> <laughs> Well, anyway, apparently according to this, you're quoted as saying, Raji 39, I did, I took pleasure in it. I never liked the guy. No, I didn't. It's cunt. <laughs> <laughs> In the West End of London. <laughs> would you imagine so, that such a little man such as you would say such a dirty word? Dirty boy, naughty man, <laughs> hold the word. That's making me feel sick, Roger, when I hear you swear like that. Um, so, coming up in the show, the only thing that's remaining, actually, from the other shows, we'll take a second, we've got stories we have stopped in the press. Right, right because, uh, because, right, because, because since we've been doing the podcast, yeah. there have been quite a lot of press stories that you've been asked for a quote on that have been taken from the podcast. And that is the first one in the people on Sunday mm -hmm. that we've not managed to stop. Yeah. Which have like PR people who can actually stop it. So what I thought was, is we could read out the stories that we've stopped. No. Why? What's the point of stopping them if you're now going to read them out? <laughs> because but that will piss off you and PR. No. <laughs> that is two, that, no, that is two people that I can piss off in one day. No, I'm doing it anyway. I swear on my mother's life. <laughs> too late now. <laughs> Unless you want my mum to die, Raji. <laughs> I mean, you shouldn't be slugging that woman off out of birds of feather anyway, because even if, <laughs> even if she did... <laughs> you were not! That woman off birds of a feather that you were yeah, slugging off saying that she fucked up, that was out of order, that what you said, Raji. I, I never liked the guy, that's a bit rude saying she was a boy. <laughs> um, we've also got uh, Richard the Banker update, and we've also found out as well, by the way, that sometimes people, some people who listen to the podcast, actually fast forward through that bit. Some people hate it that much, it's that vile that they fast forward through it. This is brilliant. We have got them here now. They have got to listen to it. So we have got a proper, proper Richard the Wanker bit that Ed has been. Ed will go in there and he logs them and, and he talks about them. And he's brilliant. <laughs> to, give you, <laughs> to give you your feelings about it, don't you? Yeah. And you've done one for us this week. Yeah, I've done a lovely one for you. Fantastic. This week. Uh, we've also got Raji does stand up. Yeah. Brilliant. West Ham eleven. <laughs> But yeah, we set it up last week. We've decided that in each of these live shows, you are going to do a stand-up comedy. Yeah. Which you've never done before in your life. No. Never done stand-up. But no. to help you, rather than just saying, Raj, you go out there and be yourself, because that would be abhorrent. Rather than doing that, 
We have got you going out, and we have, we have give you different styles of comedy to try. You have indeed. And this week, Raji, this week is the, for the first one. You are going to be the black American comic for us, aren't you, this oh. evening? I thought what we could do is you could maybe do like you could have two minutes grace, right? And then after that, it's a free for all. If people want to shout at you, they can. Yeah, well, but I haven't, I haven't got any put downs or anything worked out. So you haven't technically got an act worked out. <laughs> <laughs> I think don't, don't start at the end and work back. Right. So start at the beginning. And now I will say hello, ladies and gentlemen. That will be a start to yeah. it. Not just, what shall I do when they all start shouting cunt at me? <laughs> Which will inevitably happen. <laughs> and speed dating if we've got time. Um, <laughs> what? Uh, you ready to start? Yeah. Good. Let's go. Set us off. Oh, shall I do it? Hello, um, I'm Roger James. <laughs> I, I live in London. I like football. Um, what was the other one? The, the toilet? <laughs> uh, the Dirty little toilet ghost. Dirty little toilet ghost. Dirty little, um, little girl. Um, no, I've done no, toilet. No, 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 you want it for the light shows. No, no, because I didn't do it! Ow! I'm a dirty little girl. I'm a dirty little girl. I'm a dirty little girl. I'm dressed up as Tomb Raider. And I was dressed up as Tomb Raider. I have got knickers on from a girl I interviewed with. No, I haven't, because I've taken them off. And um, this is the start of the podcast. Roger. Yes, sir. Uh, we stopped some PR stories, some uh, stories going out in the papers and stuff. Um, very important because we have to keep your good name good. So yeah. it's important that we do stop the stories, yeah, right? Yeah, so don't do them now. I mean, you can right. generally say... No, listen, though, but listen, right, but no, but listen, right, definitely, right? Because a man wrote to me, a journalist, and I'm not going to say his name. Um, I'm not going to say his name because he wrote to me and he said that he wants you um, to do something for him to get us in the papers. He wants me to do... Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's yeah, yeah, sense. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay. His email says, Is there any chance you could get Raji to spill any raunchy EastEnders gossip during the podcast? Anyone caught shagging on set etc he doesn't have to name names I don't care whether Raggio makes it all completely a star caught shagging a gorgeous star struck fan in the Queen Vic would be ideal like I said no one needs to be named something along these lines but I am 100% certain that an, est- an EastEnders sex scandal will get the podcast in the papers right come on then Raji yeah but it'll also probably get me into court if it's not true so I can't well, make something not, up please no I can't because <laughs> he's they'll, 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 um, they'll quote me and, and then they'll say or even if it's got anything to do with the podcast, right, Roger, work out did I uh, right, said it. Is it possible, right? Because you all you need is a reasonable doubt. Is it possible that Dean Gaffney ever got a bonk on in your dressing room? Is that possible or not? <laughs> no, is it possible? You don't have, you'd have to know for a fact. Is it po- is it possible? I don't know because he left by the time I started. All right, and Gus. <laughs> uh, is that possible? No, I don't think he was ever right, in my right, dressing room. Roger, Roger, Roger. Did you not have a dressing room? No, I think he was never <laughs> well, no. of course, he's got the plate from my dressing room there, so you know I had one. Oh, so that's that proves everything. Doesn't it? That's it. Right, Raji. Yes. You know Wellard, right? Yes. Did he ever do a poo, right, in Betty's Hot Pot? I don't know. And <laughs> Bet- um, Betty's Hot Pot's from Coronation Street. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right, Roger. <laughs> <laughs> Roger, did you have a rubby knob on the Ramsey Street sign or not? <laughs> and that, right, just say that you did and we're going to the papers. Right, Roger. What? Did Poirot have sex on the boat from El Dorado? <laughs> <laughs> that was some brilliant cultural references. <laughs> <laughs> right, I'm going to read out all these stories. Okay. That were sent to us. Okay, Roger said okay. No, I meant okay. Oh, you said okay! You said okay! You said okay! That's the end of it now. Right. It's not the stories about me. Shut up. I thought you meant the stories people right. sent in. This is one that we, we managed to get stopped. I apologise in advance to PR. Why are you doing this? Because I think it's funny that we have that people have worked really hard to stop it. Yeah, it's never, funny. It's never funny between us. Right. No, but we are regaining the power. No, you're just fucking no. me up. No, I'm not fucking you up, right? Because it's all stuff that you said in the podcast mostly, right? And and what I'm doing is I it, this is our scoop. Hold on, I'm We are scooping this. You're always confused. Stay there. This is stuff. You get confused when you look at your shoes and no, which one is which? <laughs> this is stuff to do with things I've One said. One time, EastEnders heartthrob, Raji James, heartthrob, <laughs> has revealed his curb crawling shame. <laughs> Telly hunk, Raji. Telly hunk! <laughs> I just read that bit fast to spread over it. Telly hunk! Tell you Raji was left red-faced when he le- mm, is that possible? <laughs> when he was nabbed by police at London's King's Cross Station. The actor who starred as Albert Square's Ash Ferreira was questioned by vice cops while starstruck onlookers watched. Exclamation mark. The officers were convinced embarrassed Raji was looking for X-rated action with hookers. Exclamation mark. Last night he said that I got stopped in King's Cross and they gave me the whole full third degree business. You did say that. I did say that. Because then I said they said that on was fire. true. But they weren't stopping me because of that and all the. the, the... Uh, listen. I'm not, what am I going to believe? Something that's in the Sunday tabloid or you? <laughs> <laughs> Sunday tabloid, Roger. 
They said they thought it was unusual that I was sitting there in the vehicle and they wanted to know what I was doing. Raji, who has also starred in Doctor Who and The Bill, <laughs> made his astonishing confession on a popular iTunes comedy show called The Ray Peacock Podcast. Me? In the papers? That's you. <laughs> well, not, because with these, these... No, this is, these is me in the papers, Raji. Okay. <laughs> Officers told him he'd been stopped due to a vice crackdown in the area. He said that area is known for curb crawling. I didn't know. I do now. They pointed it out for me. <laughs> What did they point? Did they point out that that's one? No. That's one, <laughs> they that's did, one there, they and did. that one down there is one. No, this is what it is. Despite being dismissed, uh, dismissed as a perverted curb crawler by the internet show's comedian host Ray Peacock, Raji insisted he was doing nothing wrong. He said, I just dropped a friend off at the station. They had literally just got out of the car. I put the engine back on. I turned the indic indicator on and the blue lights flashed behind me. Ends. <laughs> ends. Ends. Oh, ends the story, right. I think we've worked something out. What? We think that we can write stories for the tabloids as yep. well, and then we can get some of the money, sort your rent out for you. So, uh, Ed right, right, Raji, listen to this lovely story I've written and sent to the papers. Go on then. Right. <clears throat> Former EastEnders knob jockey. Wait, uh, are you going to say what it's about or just be a Oh scoop? no, it, is, it was revealed in the first line like professionals do, like in that Okay, one. it is a scoop there, Raji, and we have got it, and we have Hold got money for it. Jockey. <laughs> Former EastEnders knob jockey, Raji James, has been found breeding cats to start his own army. <laughs> <laughs> the actor, who famously played Jimmy Mystery in The Bill, <laughs> has been spotted by neighbours building a mini assault course in his back garden. <laughs> He has been witnessed in the dead of night drilling a huge procession of felines and cackling to himself. <laughs> when we called the neighbour in question, who wished to remain nameless, he said, Hello, George Kelly speaking. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, the newspaper, yeah, that's fine. I saw him in full military gear shouting at a kitten for not doing the monkey bars properly. <laughs> he was shouting something about getting everyone back for what they had done by taking over the world with his cat strike force. <laughs> We spoke, we spoke to Mr. James, he said, I don't know what you're talking about, before asking someone called Colonel Meow to get him a biscuit. <laughs> I like that. Do you remember in the first episode of this series, when we made you wee in some cops? Yeah. Now, some people in the world, Raj, are into that. What? Apparently so. Some people in the world are into that sort of thing. Well, I know that some people like being weed on and weeing up, but I didn't know people specifically like weeing into cops. Is that... <laughs> Is that... <laughs> you got it right the first time. Yeah, I knew yeah, about yeah, that. that. Yeah, 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 you, that. you know all about that, don't you? No, I've heard about it. Um, <laughs> have you ever weed on someone or not? Not deliberately, no. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever been weed on deliberately or otherwise? Uh, no, I was made to drink some weed once. <laughs> <laughs> what? Is this in Belmarsh or not? <laughs> No, it's just when I, when I was younger, my brother just... You fucking pick your moments to bring this <laughs> into <laughs> I'm not saying it when we're at home at your house, but I'll tell you what, if we get an audience in the West End, I'm, there, I'm telling everybody about that time I drank all that wheel funds. No, but go, it's just a silly little... My brother played a prank on me, that was all. Oh. <laughs> when I was little. I'm listening. No, no, that was... That, was that is I, abuse, right? <laughs> it's not a prank. No, I was at home one day, and uh, uh, I, I can't remember why, um, but... <laughs> because you, you live there! <laughs> <laughs> How the hell then? Because I can't remember why. No, I... <laughs> That's fucking brilliant. Only, only from you was that phrase ever good. But I meant, oh, I don't know Jesus. why, in reference to the next bit, which was that, that, that he, um, that I'd asked, he, he offered to get me a drink. I was only little, I was about nine or something. And he went to get me a drink, and he gave it to me, and I thought it was lemon squash, and I drank it, and then afterwards he went, ah, that was we in there. And that was, that was it. That I was, was expecting more from that story. <laughs> Um, right, we've got this, this letter. Right, I swear to God this is true. Are you ready? Can I just say something? No, Please, listen. Before we start, because well, it is bugging me. You know what I'm like with numbers, right? Your, your sheets of paper... I, I, no, hang on. I don't know what you're like no, with you're numbers. Just, <laughs> you're just having oh, a you, you don't make numbers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I often use them for counting and for names no, of things. Sometimes I just say three in the middle of the day. I mean, that's so rugged. <laughs> <laughs> that is classic, James. <laughs> No, come on. come on, no, it's just... No, explain that. I, I know what you're no, like. No, but you've had a go at me before, because whenever you say things to do with, like, money and stuff, and I sit there and I try and mathematically... Yeah, but the number for that is always not, isn't it, Richard? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
Yeah, yeah, minus numbers normally. Go on. Um, but anyway, the, yeah. thing, the thing I was distracted by, and it is bugging me a little bit, is you know you've numbered your pages, yeah. but some of them have got the same number on. So you haven't like numbered them in order. Yeah. So like some of them have both got number two on. Yeah. And you've got more That's than because, one sheet right, listen, three on it. Don't touch it. That's because these two, and you've genuinely led us down a fucking dead end here, Roger. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we have to pull this back now. But, okay. I, but because I like you, and because you can't criticise them, you have to be supportive to them. <laughs> right? Well, I'll tell you what it is. That means that they are all related to section two. Oh. Um, Oh, okay, 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 okay. So that is cool. just some little notes and things, and that is the letter that I'm going to read you. Okay, cool. Is that okay? That's brilliant. Thank you. Well You're just bugging me. No, that's Sorry. all right. Is, Sorry, Ed. Is anything else bugging you no, at all? No, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> right. So this letter, what we've got, um, it says. <laughs> 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 The thing is, because I know you will. No, don't put what, it What gives you that idea? No, the four I've already done and you've already done. No one knows what I'm talking about. Oh, sorry, no, don't, don't, no, don't tell them. Don't oh, tell okay. them. Fuck them, they should have come. <laughs> Here's a letter. And I actually, we got this. I told Ed about it and then we completely forgot about it. We got this the week after you did that weird. Right, you ready? Yeah. Dear Ray, I hope you will excuse me writing to you unannounced, but I have a request that I was hoping you, brackets, or more specifically Raji, would consider. I found your podcast recently as I am a big fan of The Bill. <laughs> And remember Raji fondly from this. It's come from Australia, which apparently the bill is really big in Australia. Huge. Yeah. And remember Raji fondly from this program. Okay. I don't know why he was always watching the background. <laughs> I don't know why he was always watching the people behind the main actors. I, I don't know why. Always he was in the background. In the episode I listened to, you encouraged Raji to piss into some cups, and I was wondering whether you still had these. Or, and bear in mind this is Australia. I wonder whether you still have these, or whether Raji would send me a small bottle. A regular water bottle would be top. <laughs> I am willing to pay $75. And of course the postage out here to us. Keep up the good work. Best regards, George. <laughs> now wouldn't you start that letter with, right, this is going to sound weird. <laughs> <laughs> when you go, actually I'm writing to a normal person, so I, I should probably say, it. this is, might sound a little bit weird what I'm going to say. That is, but that is literally like it's the most common thing in the world. That is but $75, you spent some time in Australia a couple of years ago, how much is that? Is that a lot? 30 quid, 20 quid, 25 quid, about 20, I think it's about 25, isn't it? Somewhere between uh, a third and a half. <laughs> you know, it's like the so, numbers. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. No, the thing is, don't forget that the exchange rate does fluctuate, so, so not, obviously not in the time it took me to say it, but say between now <laughs> and the end of the week, it could be any of those numbers, it could have been, but it could be though, it could be different routes slightly, yeah, you know, obviously you choose the day on which you get the best rate. Um, okay, well let's say that it's top whack. Right, top whack would be about 30, 32. <sighs> let's say it's 32. Right. 32 quid. Okay. For a bottle, regular size, I don't know whether it means these big ones or whether it's just like that, I presume it's just that. Okay. 30 quid, and he will pay postage as well. That's weird. Yes, I, I, know, I know it's weird, I'm asking you will you do it. Right, but the same not, thing as okay. well, he's not capped it, he's not said I only want one. We could send him so much piss. He's a regular supply guy, Roger. Or oh, Roger, oh, we can get a really long tube and hook it up to your knob right and get it all the way to Australia and <laughs> just have it on tap. <laughs> he has got to put, each time he has got to put $75 in it, it yeah. gets a pint yeah. worth. <laughs> what do you think he's doing with it? Well, has he got it already? I don't know. <laughs> if, 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 he, if, he, if he gets it, what, what would he do with it? What do you think? Do you think you know he what? drink? There's some things it's best not to think about. Just don't worry about it, just let, let him have it. But why does it have to Seize be Seize the day, can't pay for me. No, because I think... put like horse piss in it or something. I mean, not that I know that that's any easy to get hold of, but, but you could... <laughs> but, you know what I mean? Well, not for you, <laughs> anyway. Look at me, go, you can put some of my horse piss in it. Oh, <laughs> I mean, you can put horse piss in it. <laughs> Yeah. Um, I got approached, the, speaking of toilets there, I got approached in the toilets again. Remember I got approached, and yeah. that glory hole thing that happened when that cock came through. Yeah. I got approached again. What, where, in what? South Bend Services about three nights ago. Okay. Right, I'd gone in for a proper toilet, right? Sat down, because that's the best way of doing proper toilets I've worked out. Right? <laughs> and then a hand came underneath the key cubicle, right, with poppers in it, and just tapped oh, it. Oh, that's sniffy stuff, right? Uh, are you thinking of Vicks? No. <laughs> no, I, I know what poppers are. They give you a headache. Ta they give you a headache? Yeah. When I tried it years and years ago, when I was about <gasps> 18, Extend it in drug shame. <laughs> Someone... Sunday people, you've been doing drugs. Well, so... <laughs> <laughs> that usually works. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and so he started doing that, right? And I went, I was yeah. sat there going, oh, um, no, thank you. It's like two in the morning, yeah. right? I'm sat there. Then he put his hand under and did a wanky sign. No and I said, like, oh, um, no, thank you. <laughs> oh, no, thank you. And then I swear to God, he put his head under. 
He looked a bit like Richard Wanker, a little bit like him, and he had his head wedged underneath like that, and he couldn't even see me. He was just trying to look up at me like that, and, it, and, he's, and he went, and it's a bit crude, and he went, "Go in the end one." <laughs> Come win the M1, I'll suck you off. <laughs> right, I swear to God, and I sat there and I had a little moment of bravery because part of me wanted to just leave without wiping, and part of me, part of me thought, mm, he's asked three times now, and, and, then, and another part of me just thought, I'm gonna just say something. And I leant over and I, and I leant my head down and went, What are you doing? Like that. And then he saw my face and he went, Oh, it's not you. <laughs> it's not you. Who recognises their friends by their shoes? But I'll tell you what, on the positive side though, I had, a, I, had a, I had a good uh, toilet thing happen. Can I? <laughs> what? No. no. 75 quid a bottle, so not bad. No. <laughs> no but you, you've, had, you've had negative things happen in toilets, so I'm trying to, I'll try and cheer you up with a positive thing. I don't need cheering up. When I was coming back from yours, and I got back about, I don't know, 10 o'clock or whatever it was, at uh, yeah. uh, King's Cross, yeah. uh, I went into the, the toilets there, right? But I, I went into the toilets, and um, it was one of these 10p things, where you know, you've got to put 10p in. Fruit machine. No, uh, <laughs> the, the turnstile, the turnstile, right? Yeah. So I didn't have a 10p, I had a pound coin, and there was no attendant there. It's a brilliant storyteller, isn't it? In a way, uh, you, you get ago. literally no, all was, the fucking details no about it. I went into the toilet, there were 17 steps. Mm -hmm. I went down the steps, I went one, two, three, <laughs> four, there was some graffiti on the wall, I thought I was up and read it. It said Carl was here. <laughs> I carried on way. Um, nine, ten, eleven, no, twelve. Come on. No, no, it was a ten p thing. No, you know the things. Integral, I have to explain the thing about the ten p because that's integral to the story. Because the ten p, right? Well, the lack of ten p actually is the integral bit to the story. Because I went up the, I went up the platform, up to the platform bit, and there's a. There's a <laughs> Roger. Yes, sir. What's your best section in the podcast? Oh, right. Well, we know what's coming then. Um, um, yeah, go on. Richard the Wanker's coming next, right? Richard the Wanker's coming next. <laughs> There's a fucking biography title if ever you heard one. <laughs> <laughs> Roger. Go on then. Um, I mean, but we're getting a bit obsessed with Richard the Wanker, even, even more so than we already were, right? And we normally see him on U Vutu. Which is you like, normally see him on U Vutu. You yes. watch it in secret. No. Right? <laughs> which is a, like a sex YouTube, is what it is. But he's also on this other site. He's on two other sites. He's on this site, right, called masturbation.com. Oh, right, which is true. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, listen, like that. No, listen, I'm right? with you. It, it's just a forum, right, yeah. for people who masturbate. And, right? and Richard the Wanker's on that one. Believe it or not, Ed. <laughs> Richard, <laughs> <laughs> unbelievable as it sounds. <laughs> I mean, yeah, he's a member of those. Yeah, cool. wow. um, but but he's got a profile on there, and right, and this I swear to God is his real profile. Um, occupation says nothing. Oh. Interests wanking. I shit you not. That, that is literally all he's put. <laughs> Gender <laughs> male. Yeah. Date of birth November 1949. Okay. So we're already getting. We could do a credit check on him nearly. <laughs> Ethnic group white. Relationship status in a monogamous relationship. I'm not sure if it counts as monogamous if everyone watches you wank. <laughs> yeah, you're not actually in contact with anyone else, are you? So it's kind of maybe and next week, Roger. And also, <laughs> and also, and also, when the pictures that you show on the internet of your wife, she is clearly dead. Yeah. <laughs> Sexuality straight. What? But he's always talking about men wanking on him and, and joining, you know, joining. He's just inclusive. Right, no, wait, wait. I, feel, I, no, I think I've seen all his videos. I've never ever heard him say a bad man wanking on him. No, no but he's he's just, like, like, come I, on, everyone have a wank with me. Yeah, yeah, wank, yeah, wank along with me. Yeah, yeah, it's like a wank along. He's <laughs> <laughs> like the, it's like Roger, the you power unicorn of masturbation. Roger, you have a guy a wanky okey. You know, wanky okey. Smoke, no. Good. So, health conscious. <laughs> Hi, height says nothing. Body type, medium. Okay. Uh, sexual assets, average. Assets? <laughs> I think it means his penis size. Oh, right, it doesn't mean like he owns a whorehouse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when you say assets, you think buildings and stuff, don't you? You know what we thought he was doing fuck all for this? Yeah. I reckon he's been under him, right, I'm going to write the best jokes I've ever been with, <laughs> and I'm going to spring them on them on the night. <laughs> Nationality, United Kingdom. Country of residence, uh, United Kingdom. City or town, Oxfordshire. That's a shot for everyone. We have got him pinned to an area. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, that does mean... Fuck, that. I've heard of that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've been there. No, but one of the, one of the things... That means that we are married. <laughs> <laughs> no, but come on, because one of the things we've talked about is that, oh, it's really unlikely he's going to turn up. He's not going to come all the way down from Sheffield to come to the live podcast show. I, I'm sure he's actually... But Oxfordshire's like, that's not far, is it? Just up the road. Wow. So what we worried about, about inviting him, 
we were saying that like it probably cost a bit to get him down here. Probably won't now. You've yeah. got a spare room. That's not the point. No, I don't anyway. You have? No, that one with the bunk beds in it. No, that's where the kids sleep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but we can schedule <laughs> around. <laughs> I'm not having him in my house. <laughs> I mean, you know I've got the computer and the webcam and all that set up. I'm not having him. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> But that will keep him away from you. No, because then he knows where I live. Well, I'm sure he's got better things to do than stalk you. Wanking, for example. <laughs> <laughs> right, what if I let him, right? Well, I'd not let him, but what? Right, if we agree that he can come to your house, I'll blindfold him so he can't see where it is. Okay. Right, right, and we'll say that it is your sexual fantasy, right, that when you're in your house on the phone to the bank, your sexual fantasy is for a 58-year-old man to masturbate no, for your letter. No, <laughs> <laughs> no, but no, but just, just imagine it. Just, because it would be funny. It would be horrible at the time, but it would be funny afterwards. <laughs> It will be an anecdote. No. <laughs> no. What if you wake up and he's already done it? What will happen? Yeah. <laughs> 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 well, if you think about that for a bit. <laughs> right. Ed, Richard right. the Wanker this week. Uh, you logged uh, your feelings and thoughts when you were doing And you were doing it in my house the other day. Yeah. Yeah, right. we, you get a few mentions in this. Cool. <laughs> Um, I was tired. I feel we were just about to find out how horribly unpopular this section is. I don't care, it's my favourite section and I'm fucking sticking to my guns. Right, okay, I'll start I love it, man, I won't be happy till he's the president of the world. <laughs> <laughs> this has taken longer than usual this week because I am at Ray's house and he keeps distracting me with questions like, can you have a bat as a pet? <laughs> <laughs> One second. We are greeted by Richard, who is in a smiley mood today. He is doing his best face that he probably uses for photos, but he probably has his top on on Willy in for them, I hope. <laughs> Although he is so hairy, he probably doesn't even need a top. Three seconds. His hair on his body actually looks really soft, like a mohair jumper. Is it wrong that I want to touch it? <laughs> Maybe. One week I hope he puts cane rolls into it to make his back look like a rapper. <laughs> I would like that. 23 seconds. Today he is going to be coming over Chippy. <laughs> when he said this, I had a brief hope that he would be wanking over pictures of Chip Shop from across the country. <laughs> this is the front window of Mr. Cod in Preston. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at that fryer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm my tails, I'm the batter, the yardy bastard. <laughs> 33 seconds. Chippy's pictures have been sent in by her husband, Mike. Mike and Richard have swapped pictures of their respective wives. I bet Mike was made up with his end of the deal. <laughs> Chippy looks alright, but I have seen Richard's wife and it's not a direct swap. Maybe Richard had to include something else in with the deal to balance it out. Probably a note of apology. <laughs> 40 seconds. Mike has told Richard that he has already wanked over pictures of his wife. I'm sure he was just being polite. <laughs> <laughs> One minute two. We are shown a selection of Chippy's pics. <laughs> Richard says, as you can see, she's black. <laughs> Thanks for that, Richard. Oh, Ray has just walked out of his bathroom naked except for cupped hands. <laughs> It is weird watching a nude northern man and then another one appears. <laughs> <laughs> no, it gets bad now. <laughs> one minute fifty-three. He says, Oh, she has lovely flaps on her pussy. <laughs> he says this with surprisingly little sexuality, like he is talking about the wing mirrors on a Ford Cortina. <laughs> He says that any woman who has pictures of herself like this is asking to be spunked over. <laughs> so, how can I refuse? <laughs> Easily, Richard, like this. <laughs> no. <laughs> I will not wank on pictures of another man's wife and film it. It is degrading to me, the woman involved, and Ed. <laughs> We'll have to watch it and then read it out in front of real people this week, which makes it worse. <laughs> and then make up excuses to his mum as to why she couldn't come to the show. <laughs> the excuse I came up with in the end was that Raji was his sexual predator and comes on to everything. <laughs> Even Pauline Fowler once in the laundrette, but she said no, so Raji cried in the corner until his brother came and picked him up. <laughs> Which is not even true. No. <laughs> Two minutes thirteen. One of the pictures has already been spunked on. This is the closest picture we'll get to saying, Here's what I did earlier. <laughs> <laughs> Two 
three minutes thirty. He is wanking now, which is nice, isn't it? And definitely something we should be talking about in the West End. <laughs> Richard says, oh, this is wicked, which means he is cool and down with the kids. On second thoughts, I hope he's not down with any kids. <laughs> Three minutes, twelve. He mentions the squelching sound that we can hear and clarifies that this is the noise of him wanking. <laughs> oh, thanks for clearing that up, Richard. I thought there was a horse chewing on a mango off camera. <laughs> Three minutes. Three minutes, eighteen. Boom! Richard won chippy nil. <laughs> He is very polite and says, Chippy, if you see this, I hope you enjoy it and thank you for giving me the privilege of doing it. This is nice as I feel a lot of the manners have gone from the practice of wanking over pics of people's fannies. <laughs> if Richard had a cap, I'm sure he would doff it before he jizzed. <laughs> What we're going to do uh, now is something we promised earlier on, we promised last week in the show, yeah. is we're going to do Raji's stand-up, which um, we, last week, we set in the challenge, told him he had yeah, to, yeah, yeah, yeah. do some stand-up comedy in the style of a, a black United States comedian. Yes. In, like Chris Rock, Eddie Murphy, that sort of thing. I'm still not sure how racist this will be, though. <laughs> and by the way, I just want to say quickly, because I forgot to tell you this, he was running through it earlier, right? And he was sort of doing it under his breath for about eight minutes, and I went, Raji, are you going over this again? He went, no, I'm only halfway through. <laughs> Tell me you can do his five minutes tops. Hang on. Raji? Yeah? Um, how long is your act? Uh, 17 bits. <laughs> <laughs> so, but how long is that in minutes? I don't know. I've never done it all the way through. Oh. <laughs> someone tell me when I've done four. Well, someone tell you when, you, when you've done four? Four, four, four bits. Is that traditional in stand-up comedy? <laughs> <laughs> you nominate someone in the audience, can you, know, can you tell me when I've done four minutes? <laughs> why? Line, well, not always. Why? Why? Can somebody tell me when I've done four minutes? Why? Because then I'll know I've done four <laughs> minutes. <laughs> yeah, I will tell you when you've done four, Raji. Yeah. Raji! Yeah. You've done four! <laughs> <laughs> is Steve Bennett here? Yeah. Okay. Steve Bennett uh, is in charge of Chortle, yep. who hosts this, this thing. Are you reviewing now, Steve? Yeah. All right, so if you say it as rubbish, you are technically criticising yourself. <laughs> <laughs> because it is on your site. <laughs> um, Steve, can you do, a, and I'm really sorry to spring it on you, but can, can you do a, a sub-review? Yeah, yeah. But now, right, so, can, and honestly, be fucking ruthless. <laughs> but, no, no, do what you always do in your reviews. You should say, he was really, really, <laughs> let's just say, he was really, really brilliant, he was great, he had some brilliant material, and great to do him and oh, oh, it was absolutely fantastic, but it was shit. <laughs> and do what else you do in your reviews, right, and just misspell everything. <laughs> You know when you called me a cuddly charmer, right? <laughs> Was that just fat? <laughs> that is fat, I definitely That's what I mean. <laughs> Roger, are you ready yet? Right, are we going right. to do it proper, like... You do, you, well, you do, do you want to do some comparing? Oh, I'm not very good at it. Okay. Raji! <laughs> <laughs> it's not it's not it's not He's not even called that. Well, it, that is his first name, isn't it? No, he's called... Oh, yeah, Raji Hot Dog Mac. Right, and he's wearing a special medallion, right? Which we found out about today. Oh, fucking hell! But, right... <laughs> <laughs> the medallion that he's wearing, right, is yeah. genuinely... Off Robin Hood when he was on it. Off Robin Hood when he was... <laughs> <laughs> right? He licked it... <laughs> He played Prince Malik in Robin Hood, right, and nicked part of his costume, and then and he just got it out of a drawer today. We, like, we thought he had the right Have a sandwich bag. <laughs> <laughs> so he's wearing that, so I'm going to look at that. Um, all right, okay, so we bring it on. Yeah, cool. Okay. Right, everyone go wild, everyone go crazy. Faraji Hot Dog Mac! <laughs> Recently, you know, I've got that present <laughs> But you know what? Being in airports, man, it's a scary, scary thing. You know, there was a time when a black man... <laughs> and you'd know exactly what was coming. You'd know no matter what happened, you'd walk up that desk and they'd be... So, you got any weapons? No. You got any drugs? 
It's not that for babies. No! But now, man, you don't know what's going to happen. I could walk up to the custom desk nowadays with a white woman on each arm, a suitcase full of smack, smoking weed all day long. And they just be, hey man, can you just move along? We just need to get a clear line of sight for those strange arms looking men. <laughs> My dog, I'll tell you. <laughs> now, now we must be. All this any Arab shit, all that <laughs> terrorist business, don't scare me none. Not at all. <laughs> because terrorists never take black hostages. <laughs> Apologies or <laughs> <laughs> Oh 
Um, there goes Raji doing his, um, God, I can't wait to hear this fucking review. <laughs> <laughs> so, Steve, um, Steve Bennett from Chortle, you there, sir? Yeah. Can you, I know you don't like the attention, but can you just come here so I can get you on the mic? That's all it is. Okay, Steve, uh, good to see you. Looking well. Thank you very much. Um, so, you've, uh, you've been, uh, uh, exclusively invited here tonight to, uh, to witness the birth of a new legend. <laughs> uh, Raji, hot dog, um, what's he called? Matt. Mac. <laughs> um, who has just whipped this crowd into a frenzy. Uh, what were your thoughts on his performance, please, Steve? I know, and you are, by the way, doing this off the cuff. Oh, yeah, that's so fine. He, he was um, as good as Richard Pryor. <laughs> now. The MSK. Roger! Roger, we've got you a quote! <laughs> okay. But he, he, was, he was just like um, lots of... Deaf Comedy Jam comics. Yeah, and they do very well out of that. Yeah. Um, whether you can get away with it actually on telly, I don't know. But Do you um, think not being black would have got in the way? <laughs> Are you not black? <laughs> <laughs> That's how convincing you are. I, you back. I mean, some would argue that you wouldn't get away with it in a little room at the Arts Theatre, in fairness. <laughs> but, but somehow, he did. Yeah. Do you think it was the two fat blokes behind him looking appalled? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Otherwise, it would have been a wrap. Um, you don't do stars other than Edinburgh, really, normally. But um, I'm going to ask you to make an exception at the moment. It would be like, not so much the star as a black hole. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's bigger than the star, right? So that's good. <laughs> Okay, that is the end of the first Radio Got Live podcast. That was fun, wasn't it? Thank you, Big Fat Gamble, for joining us. Thank you. Big Fat Gamble, thank you. So, Little Roger James, he's been decided to win! <laughs> thank you very much to the Arts Theatre London for hosting us. Thank you to Chortle.co.uk for hosting the podcast. It's been a big enough production. We shall see you next week. Thank you very much to the audience as well. Thank you. <laughs> the Ray Pickup podcast was recorded live at Arts Theatre London on 22nd of April 2008. Hosted by Chortle.co.uk, it was performed by Ray Peacock, Raji James and Ed Gamble. The production coordinators were Laura Barron, Alice Cadogan and James Taylor. And the technical operation was by Simon Streeting. The Ray Peacock podcast is a big enough production, edited and produced by Ian Bullsworth. For tickets and details of the remaining shows on 29th of April, 6th of May, 13th of May and 20th of May, please visit artstheatrelondon.com. <laughs>